What have you done, Elijah? What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So I did see Glass last night, the concluding chapter in the Israel 177 trilogy that, Shyam that M. Night Shyamalan started all the way back in 2000 with uh, the 2000 superhero drama uh, Unbreakable, which starred Bruce Willis and Samuel Jackson as Bruce Willis starred as David Dunn, a security guard who's kind of having a little bit of a spat in his, in his marriage. He's not having the best life at the moment. He discovers that he has these superhuman uh, abilities to him with the aid of Samuel Jackson's character, Elijah Price, who is a, a comic book fanatic. And we learn more about him as those movies progress. Uh, Glass is kind of culminating that movie. Glass, well, not kind of, it is. It's a culmination of Unbreakable and 2017 Split, both of which are some of Shyamalan's best directed and put together films. Glass is not as good as either of those two movies, uh, but because I give Unbreakable at I give Unbreakable an eight, and I give Split a seven and a half. This movie here, I'm already going to tell you what my score is for it. I'm going to give Glass a seven out of ten, and I'm going to get into those reasons right now. Glass has so Glass starts off with if you haven't seen Unbreakable or Split, you're gonna you're gonna have to watch both of those movies because you're not gonna get any type of reason any type of explanation as to who these people are for the most part up until they get into the asylum and you might be confused at certain points in the film because you cannot this is not one of those movies you can just go sit down and look at because it's not a standalone movie like uh unbreakable and split word this is a culmination of those two movies so it relies on you to have previously seen those two films but anyway in this movie uh the horde this movie takes place a few weeks after Split. So in this film, we have the Horde once again portrayed by James McAvoy, who is absolutely amazing in this film. He even gets his own section of section in the credits. Uh, he does an amazing job in the film. But anyway, he's he's basically on on the uh, on the loose in Philadelphia. He's been on the loose. This is three weeks after Split. He's abducted a few more girls. David Dunn from Unbreakable has been going around saving people ever since for the past 19 years he's even got his own nickname the overseer and he even owns his own home security business uh he's been tracking down the horde he finds the horde they do a little battle uh just as the battle's getting good they're taken to a mental institution by dr ellie staples who plays a very crucial role in the finale of this film ellie staples is played by uh Sarah Paulson, who was in Netflix's Bird Box, and I think some of you might know her from American Horror Story. I think that I think that's where most people recognize her from. She does fine for what she for her role. She gives an amazing performance. I didn't really care for her character too much, but and then I and then going back to what the critics were saying, the critics are really just making this making this seem worse than what it actually is. This movie is is scattered with plot holes. Uh, several things go left unanswered, and. Shyamalan does get a bit messy in the final act of the film, but at the end of the day, this there's still so much to appreciate here as far as the other aspects of filmmaking that I feel that the critics are just honing in on the fact that this movie wasn't what they expected it to be. And I feel like a bunch of people expected this to be a Marvel DC type of superhero movie, which is exactly what it's not trying to do, even though in the kind of third act, it kind of bleeds into that territory. It kind of becomes a parody of itself, sadly. Uh, but once they get into the institution, they are there and they realize that uh, we see that Elijah Price is also being held there. Elijah Price is once again portrayed by Samuel Jackson. He's been at that mental institution since the ending of Unbreakable. If you recall, in Unbreakable, he was the man responsible for the train wreck and causing David Dunn to figure out he, w he did have super abilities. He Well, he caused him to believe he did anyway. Uh, or further believe that he did. I want to say that Glass is very well directed. All three of the uh, central characters, as far as like the Horde, Mr. Glass, and David Dunn, they are they are fine. James McAvoy being the standout, his no one touches him in this. No one touches him in this movie. His performance and the way he goes from one character to the next, he does it with ease. Uh, and he makes it so believable. You act, you actually think he he will literally have this disorder. He is just amazing in this movie. And I hope he doesn't get overlooked like how he did with his performance in Split because he is on he is on his best 
best performance in this movie. Bruce Willis and Samuel Jackson, they do what they can for what little they are given. Uh, the issues in the film lie with the fact that some of the things that get introduced and some of the plot twists don't get fully fleshed out. You're left to kind of ponder what was told to you in the other half of the film, which is fine. I have no problem doing that because there's several clues scattered. Or not several, but there's a few clues scattered that'll help you figure out what is going on in the movie. I think that this, I think that the end result of the film and the overall message Shyamalan was trying to get across, I think he sticks that landing. However, it is a bit messy and I can see why it is getting mixed to average reviews. But some of the critics are being overly harsh. Uh, you can't go into this movie and just grade it on your expectations. You need to grade it based off what you actually got. And what we have here is one of Shyamalan's better directed films in recent memory. Uh, the performances are all top. The performances are all very good. The development that we get with these characters as as the film progresses, and I recall like some people were saying that this movie was redundant as far as like being the same thing as Unbreakable, as far as convincing us that these people are real. It's not so much so that it's going to try to convince us that they're real, not us as in the audience. Because we, as the audience and the characters, we know that they are real. What Glass is trying to get at is can they now convince the world? And that is ultimately why this movie is called Glass because this is about Mr. Glass. He is the final puzzle piece in the film and he does play a huge factor in regards to whether or not you will get that answer if they will be able to convince the world that they are real or not. Basically what ends up happening is we have a Mr. Glass, once he sees that David Dunn and the Beast are now here, he's been planning an escape for quite some time, but once he sees that they, those two are here, he, uh, he basically begins setting up a plan to escape. And there's like an upcoming, a, upcoming spectacle or an upcoming building set to debut in the city. And he wants the two he wants david dunn and the beast to battle to prove that super beings do exist and ellie staples and her staff they're doing everything possible to make sure that that does not happen now some other issues with the movie come within the hospital itself it's severely understaffed most of the people that are there they're useless Shyamalan's writing gets a bit messy at times uh, the dialogue in it, I can see why uh, some people would find it frustrating as far as I like, constantly explaining comic book explanations and how showdowns work. But keep in mind that this is not our universe. This does not have to be a frame for frame mirror of our universe. Uh, so maybe Marvel and DC don't exist. And also another thing that I want to mention, there are like three twists in the movie that would even point towards the fact that Marvel and DC are non-existent in this movie. One of the twists would probably better explain why the dialogue is the way it is. Uh, Shyamalan, I think he did a satisfying conclusion to the trilogy. I do think it could have been better, but for what he gave us, all the plot holes and everything aside, McAvoy gave such a good performance and the, the relationship between these characters was so beautifully developed on screen and the ending of this movie sends such a powerful message to not only our, not, not only to the viewer, but to the entire universe it kind of sets this it kind of brings everything full circle and there is also a twist that will connect unbreakable directly to split and everything comes full circle and it all goes back to mr glass that's what makes that's why i never understood why people were saying he doesn't really have much to do with the film he has everything to do with it at the end of it he might not get much screen time which is i can see that being a complaint but he has so much to do with this movie it's not even funny Samuel Jackson gives some, one of his best performances in recent memory. Uh, Bruce Willis, he had some, he had a few train wrecks here and there, but he's definitely showing you that he's interested here. Uh, Sarah Paulson, she does fine. And then we have our returning characters, Anya Taylor-Joyce, who's coming back from Split. Keep in mind, this is three weeks later. I've been seeing people complain about how she's connecting with her abductor. It's not so much that she's connecting with her abductor she is not not everyone is the same she recognized that her abductor was also in the same position as she was so prop so what i thought to have happened was she was thinking that this could be me if i don't speak up and she was also under the impression that this is not actually him because kevin is never in the light it's always the horde so she sympathizes with him because they come from similar backgrounds of abuse 
that's all that was. It's not necessarily she's condoning anything sh that he did to her or her or the two girls that she was with. It's just that she was connected with him on the simple, f based on the simple fact that they both come from an abusive past. Uh, the twist in the end, as far as how it brings everything together, I like the twist. I just think not enough time was spent fleshing it out. All the twists were not fully fleshed out. And even one of the twists, even though I liked it, I think there are a few logic gaps in it. Uh, some questionable things can be said about Elijah Price, as well as how he's able to do certain things, which I understand. The ending of the film is not anticlimactic, in my opinion. I think it's actually the opposite. Uh, you it want you actually want to see more, but Shyamalan does a great job. He's already made it clear that he's he doesn't plan on continuing in this universe, but he ended it in such a beautiful and powerful way. And I don't think you could done it. He could have done this much better. I think this movie could have easily have been an eight. Uh, and all with all the plot holes and all the inconsistencies and the unanswered questions aside, he still put on one of his. He still directed one of his better films. Uh, this is one of his. This movie has a top-notch score. All the actors involved are doing their best. The cinematography is amazing. The action sequences are some of his are some of Shyamalan's best because we all know if you're familiar with him, you know he is absolutely known for having some horrendous action sequences. And I think the, the action sequences in this movie are actually very entertaining, and uh, they just get you very excited for what's ultimately going to happen. Those are my thoughts on this movie. Uh, I thought Glass was a solid conclusion. Definitely could have been much better, but for what we were given and how everything played out, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the movie down in the comment section below. If you have seen Glass, if you haven't already, subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I have links to all my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know what movies or movies or news you would like me to cover or review in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.